So about a week ago, I posted my first devlog to YouTube. As we all know, opinions are really important, so I asked my friend what he thinks. Anyway, if you haven't watched the last video, basically I'm making a medieval style poly bridge inspired bridge building game. At this point in time, the game has lots of totally not broken features. Oh sh! you're not meant to see that. Spontaneous self-destruction aside, I think it's coming along quite well. So the next thing we need to do is make a level select screen because without a level select screen, we can't select levels. At the moment, I'm not overly concerned with what the level select screen looks like, but I'm really trying to make it functional. So what I did first is I made a new scene and tried to copy over some assets from the main menu. But this didn't look too good, so I basically just put down a plane and started building it from the ground up. I wasn't entirely sure how I wanted this plane to look, so in my dumb brain I thought it would be a good idea to tile a crappily drawn texture over the entire thing to sort of simulate the idea of grass. This obviously looked like complete doo-doo, so eventually I'm going to replace it with the low poly graphic style that I've been going with since the beginning. I started putting down some cubes, which are the buttons for the level selection. Just for now, I'm going to make it so that when you mouse over them, they change colour, but eventually I might add some cool effects, like maybe they raise up from the ground or something like that and make some particle effects or something that looks really cool. But for now, it looks simple, it just changes colour, and there we go. I thought that putting down some props like the castle, the knights, and maybe some clouds would make the level look better, and damn right it made it look so much better. It, I think it sort of just distracts the user away from looking at that ugly grass texture. Right now I'm just working on the script for the level selection cubes, the one that'll make them change colour and load up the level when you press on them. To get this working, I ended up having to use ray casts. So I got rid of all of the cubes and replaced them with the ones that had the script and then I tested it out and it worked perfectly fine. I added some more code so that when you clicked on the box it made a sound and it took you to the level that is specified in the inspector. As it usually is with new code it never works straight away. So after a bit of debugging I got it to work and the level select screen was essentially done. It is ugly as hell but it is functional. Now I know what you're thinking. This is not the original game, why you do this, why you copy Polly Bridge? Ooh. To answer that question, I have to say, Polly Bridge is an amazing game. What I'm making is heavily inspired by it. But if everyone didn't make something because someone else made it first, we wouldn't have a lot of things that we have today. In the past, I've started a lot of projects that are heavily inspired by other people's games. I never end up pursuing these things and finishing them because I feel like my work's not good enough or that it's too similar to what other people have made. These days, I try to believe that if you're inspired to make something, just make it. It doesn't matter if it's similar to other people's work, it doesn't matter if you don't think it's good enough, just make it, release it, and you'll be surprised by how much people love what you've made. So basically, be proud of what you make, and it will be great. At this point in the video, uh, the editing software I'm using just yeeted one and a half minutes of my work, so I just had to go back and redo that. That was incredibly annoying. Anyway, um, I'm creating a back button. I forgot to do it before, so here we go. It's pretty easy, just put in a button. Or at least I thought it was easy. Naturally, it didn't work straight away. Turns out I had forgotten the standalone input module component of one of my game objects. Adding it back in solved it. The only problem was, I think it was such a simple mistake that it wasn't covered very well on Google. So it took me about an hour of searching to fix this problem. It was such a simple problem. I'm just like really like upset about that, not gonna lie. Anyway, saltiness aside, now I'm moving on to fixing the knight's counter. When we first implemented this, we made it so that when a knight crosses into the flag, it increments the knight count by 1. This is bad because if a knight leaves the flag area and then goes back into it, it'll count it again, so essentially a knight can count more than once. This is not, this is not good. I fixed it by making it so that each knight can only be counted once by keeping track of which knights have already crossed into the flag. It was pretty simple to fix. After testing and making sure it worked, 
I was very, very happy. Remember to dislike and subscribe.